Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Finds Out Is Reincarnation Truth and Left Ria's Peerage Part 5. Chapter 19. My Queen. An echo block him. Rainer, a keno to the air and bombard him. He can't keep up long with fighting all of us in that armor. Ria's ordered as then nodded and went to work. Saji, Ruruko, Tamo, Yuri intercept her. The pawn can promote. Momo, Ria start bombarding, Tsubuki stays with me. Sona ordered as both pawns promoted to queen and went on head first toward Lucy who grinned. Oh, this is going to be fun. Lucy thought with a sadistic grin as she started to make many magic circulars around herself, still going full speed at them. As the frontline force was in striking range of Lucy, she suddenly jumped into the sky before unleashing a humongous storm of a magic blast at the attacking force, making them start to evade. Though that also gave the opportunity for Sona's bishops to attack as they also unleashed their attacks, though they were blocked by a large red energy blast that intercepted them. Turning around they saw Issei holding Kaneko in the headlock while creating a large barrier in front of him, stopping Rainer's and Akeno's attacks. Thanks for the save hun. Lucy said with a wink as she turned towards the bishops who were charging another attack. You're more than welcome dear, though time to turn up the heat. Issei said as he boosted again increasing his power even more. Boost, 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 boost. Letting go of Kaneko, Issei sent her flying with a powerful hit to the chest while he started to dodge Akeno's and Rainer's attacks with ease. Is this the best you can all do? He taunted as he was getting bored of this. Hell Elsha and Drag even on a minimum of their power were making him work hard. This, on the other hand, was like a walk in the park. Why you weakling Rainer yelled as she formed a light spear and charged towards Issei. Though just as she was about to pierce him, he disappeared and appeared near Akeno, surprising both girls with it. Now for you, my queen. Issei said in cold voice as he sent a kick that she barely dodged. If you few for you are fiercer than usual. This is turning me on, Issei. Akeno said as she licked her lips with electricity cracking from her hand as she sent bolts of lightning at him. Though the bolts hit Lucy's own bolts who appeared in front of Issei defending him with her own electricity. Though what caught everyone's eyes was Lucy laughing in delight. Oh, what do we have here? I missed it last time I kick your asses. Though I noticed it this time, you are a half fallen. Now I know why you are this seductive and how your lightning is this powerful. Lucy said as she whispered something to Issei making him nod as Drake's voice was heard roaring boost. I'm nothing like those creatures. Akeno shouted in fury as she sent bolts of electricity at Lucy that were followed with a rain of light spears from Rainer. Hun? Lucy asked as Issei put a hand on her shoulder while giving a mental command that Drake obeyed. Transfer Drake roared as Lucy's power skyrocketed to the skies making even Grafia started to sweat a little bit. OT this is so gg good. Lucy moaned as she felt Issei's power overflowing in her making her blush a little at the thought of him overflowing her in other places. Though she quickly returned to the battle as she formed a huge shield that blocked all of their attacks with ease. Finish them. I will hold off Sona's group. Issei told her as she nodded with a smile as both of them blurred disappearing into nothingness. Where did they go? Ria's yelled as she couldn't see or feel them anywhere. That was until they heard a yell of pain coming from Sona's knight and rook as they were sent into the trees. Making all of them have wide eyes as they saw Issei creating a large ball of energy in front of his hand. Seeing that if something isn't done quickly they would lose. Ria's decided to risk it all in an attempt to stop Issei. Stop him. Now Ria's yelled as the ones that were attacking Lucy charged at Issei, surprising both of them at this. Though that was a costly mistake. As Lucy seeing that she was free from the attackers charged in high speed at an undefended Ria surprising her and her peerage, who were on their way to stop Issei. Picking her hard with a roundhouse kick to the head, Lucy sent her flying hard to the trees, where Ria's went through two of them before stopping on the third with her head, hitting the ground first as she was knocked out cold. Idiot. Was what Sona said as she knew better than sending all of her fighting force against the two. Which was proven to be a recipe for disaster. She on purpose held her queen near her to at least delay one of them till the others could come to defense. All of you retreat it's pointless to fight them like this, they aren't even using their full power against us. Akeno, get everyone else to collect her and take her back to the orc. Student council, we are heading back. Issei Haidu and Lucy Lucifuge don't think this is over what you did was traitorous and the higher ups will hear about what you did. Sona spoke as she saw that this was a losing battle. She couldn't risk losing her peerage only to subdue one of them. Though as the retreat order was issued, Issei released his armor returning in his base form. Though as Sona said those words Grafia decided to correct her. Lady Sona, if you think that what Issei Haidu did was traitorous, then you should know that he was given full permission to negotiation with the church members in hopes of you and Rhea's not dying and having a bigger chance of winning against Kakabiel. So I would consider that you wisely do not speak of this since your attack against a future head of Lucifuge House. And I think that even the Citri and Leviathan would not want to hear this, since it's like attacking a Mau. As the members of Lucifuge are the ones that are the closest to the Lucifer. 
Grafia said in strict voice making it crystal clear that even her sister would be smart enough to not talk about this. Sona just nodded with wide eyes and teleported with her peerage, along with Rhea's and her peerage that were pale with the said king out of commission. Leaving only Issei and the Lucifuge sisters and the Kendo duo. Well, I think Leviathan will be pissed at us over this. Issei said as he scratched his head while thinking. You don't have to worry about it Ice, I will make sure that Leviathan does nothing bad to you. We will say that this was a sort of training practice and that both kings needed a lot of experience to fight someone even just above their level. If they continue to fight a delaying battle against you. They would have won a war of attrition and could gather their forces to fight Lucy to maybe a stalemate. Though Rhea's stupid decision decided the battle like how it was in the raiding game against Riser. If she didn't hold on to the healer and the tear, she could have helped both Akeno and you to win with you transferring your power to them overpowering Riser. Grafia explained earning a nod from all of them. Well, now that that's settled. Let us return home Lucy. Grafia, Mura, Kat you are more than welcome to come and have dinner at my place. The exorcists are there also resting. Issei told them as he took Lucy's arm and starts walking home with the kendo duo following them. Grafia just smiled before calling Serzich's telling him that she would have dinner at Issei's place and that she had to tell him something important later. Grafia just smiled after Serzich's told her it was alright and she started walking towards her future brother-in-law house. As Grafia walked, she started thinking of how she could accelerate Issei's rise to high class as she now, even more, was sure that Lucy and Issei were perfect for each other. Bedding home, Issei stumbled upon a scene that made him chuckle. Irina was lying on the floor with her hair over her face with her feet on Zenobia's head as the said girl was leaning onto Cassie, who was watching a movie, not minding her two sleeping companions at all. As Issei got closer, he mentioned to others to keep quiet as this will be interesting. As he was near her Issei put his lips near her ear, whispering a lullaby word to her, making her eyes grow a little heavier as she was starting to slowly go to sleep. Though just as she went to sleep Issei made his move and since his parents were out having their walk, Issei summoned his gear and told Drake to shout boost as loud as he could. That idea made the mighty dragon roar in amusement as he complied with it. Bringing his gear near the half-asleep Cassie, Drake roared so loudly that it made the whole house shake, scaring even Lucy and Grafia from his mighty roar. Boost. That made all three girls yell as Issei started rolling on the floor laughing, seeing all three of them hug each other with white faces scared to death by Drake's voice. Issei Arena, Zenobia and Cassie shouted as they all brought their weapons into view, but stopped as they saw that Grafia, Lucy and the Kendo captains were on the floor laughing at their reaction, as it was priceless to them. Feeling embarrassed, Cassie just walked to Issei and pulled his ear hard, making him yelp a little while laughing. That wasn't funny ice. Cassie said with a cute pout that made him blush a little still laughing and in pain. A sorry ouch it was fun from our angel ouch, Issei said between laughs and pain that Cassie was putting his ear go through. Meaning. Cassie said as she turned around still having a cute pout that made Issei smile with a soft blush from her cuteness. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Lucy said as she somehow managed to gather control over her breathing. Oh, I needed that, it has been a while since I laughed this much. Grafia said as she also managed to stop laughing. Grafia's voice made all three girls tense and put up their guard, though Grafia easily seeing their action, knew why they were pent up. I'm not here to fight you. I'm here as a support more. You can lower your weapons. Grafia told them as she went into the kitchen to make some tea for them. What she said is true, she is way stronger than all of us combined, so just take a seat and let's relax, though where is Chelsea? Issei asked not seeing the Auburn girl anywhere. Oh, she is in the guest room keeping an eye on that night. She said she will come down when you guys come. Irina answered with a smile making Issei nod. Oh, darling is back how nice. A voice was heard as all of them turned to the stairway to see Chelsea sitting on one of the stairs while having a sweet smile. Though in Issei's case it was way too sweet. See Chelsea what did I do to have you mad at me? Issei said nervously as Chelsea stood up and started walking slowly towards him as he backed up. Now, let me think, okay darling. You told me to look for Kiba. That took four hours to find him and there is also a thunderstorm with wind and thunder that was roaring. Who can you guess why I'm about to kill you? Chelsea said in a sweet tone making Lucy and other girls laugh as Issei turned pale as he put the dots together and it was spilling to him a world of hurt. Um is there anything I can do to make you overlook this? Issei asked as he gulped a little. Um I will think about it, but since Kibbit is about to wake up I will take a rain check on that. Chelsea said making Issei sigh in relief as he dodged the bullet. Thank you Chelsea. Though I will go get Kibbit, you all sit down until I get him. Issei said as the girls nodded and went to take a sit with Grafia serving tea to them. It didn't take long for Issei to return as he was dragging Kibbit with him, while the other tried to do anything to get out of the grip of the angry dragon, who was looking like he was about to kill him. Sit down. Issei said to him as he threw him to the empty sit while standing in front of him. What do you want? And why are they here? Kiba asked as he saw the church members looking at him with curiosity. 
What I want is to know why you are acting like an idiot. As for them, they are my guests and I doubt they will attack you with Lucy and Grafia here. So spill it out, why are you so hell-bent on destroying those swords, and what did you mean by horror blades that killed you and your comrades? Issei asked in a powerful voice that made Kiba and the girls shiver a little bit as they were certain something bad will happen if Issei doesn't get the answer he wants. As Kiba looked into the eyes of the pawn he couldn't help but shiver from the intensive glare and threat he was giving him. Deciding not to test his luck with him, Kiba sighed before nodding to him making the pawn decrease his glare and back off a little bit. What I tell you is a horror that I and my friends went through before we were murdered in the most gruesome way. Though why I managed to escape before I died, it was because of them that I become a devil under Rias, and they are my constant reminder of why I live and breathe now. Kiba told them in a cold voice making some girls gasp. Please do tell Kiba. If there is a way to help you, we will make it happen. Issei said as he put a hand on Kiba's shoulder, giving him a short nod before taking a seat next to Lucy who took his arm. There is only one way to help me, and it is for me to destroy those cursed swords. Since it is because of them that my friend and comrades died. Kiba said before taking a deep breath. Now for the story. It all happened ten years ago, I was an orphan who was living in a church and was a believer in their ways. Though sometime during that time a new bishop came and stated that the Vatican ordered some experiments to be conducted in the hopes of making artificial holy sword users. So, we all gave our best effort to help in any way we can. They took our blood, make us do all kinds of exercises, sword combat magic training, but in the end, even after almost a year after it all beginning we couldn't hold a holy sword. Kiba said in a sad tone as he thither his knuckles hard making some blood come out. So, they just decided to execute all of you because you couldn't hold a holy sword. And something tells me that holy sword is none other than Excalibur. And they say we are evil. Lucy said connecting the dots that Kiba said while shaking her head at the conclusion. Yes, it just like you said. We trained to be able to hold it, but we just couldn't so one day they gathered all of us in one room and let poison gas on us. The weakest of us were the first to die. Well the stronger soon followed the same as they couldn't keep it up anymore. After 10 minutes only, a few of us were alive. Though when the guards opened the door we took the chance and make our escape. Some were shot down, some died from too much inhalation of the poison. I was the last one that died. Though those that died made sure to fall into the path of the guard so that those who escaped had even a second more to get to a safe haven. Kiba continued to talk while tears started falling from his eyes as he thought about the events that transpired on that fateful day. With a heavy sigh and deep breath, he continued the story that was already horrified to the church members and the kendo duo. Who also had tears in their eyes at the story. After running for more than five minutes in knee-deep snow, I was so weak and tired from the poison and running that I just fell face first into the snow. Though before death took me Rias appeared in front of me. She told me that it was a waste to lose such good potential and gave me a new life as a devil. From that day on I pledged my allegiance to her unconditionally, though I still vowed to destroy the thing that took my friends away from me. That's why my hatred for the Excalibur swords is so strong. And I will destroy them even if it cost me my life. Kiba finished his story in a strong hateful tone that some very shocked to hear from him. After a few moments of silence, Kiba stood up about to go hunt no doubt freed and finally attempt to destroy the sword that he hates with every fiber of his body. Though his movements were stooped when Issei spoke followed by Cassie and Arena. So that's why you are rushing into your death. Well, how about you wait for a moment so we can tell you something interesting. Sounds good. Issei spoke getting Kiba's attention as he turned around to look at the pawn of their group. And what if it is that, my life is mine alone, I do care for our peerage, and I will defend everyone there even you. But this is something personal. And what do you hate to tell that is interesting him? Kiba strongly told Issei who also stood up and as the two men in the group stared down each other unflinching, Lucy just sighed as this going to be a long night and she wanted to sleep. Alright, this is getting nowhere. Love, tell us what is so interesting. It's getting late and I want to sleep. So spill it now, Lucy said in a strict voice that made both Kiba and Issei flinch from her voice alone, as she smiled sweetly at them making them sweat a little. Remembering how Lucy can be when pissed and that was something that both guys agreed silently not to feel her wrath again. Alright. Kiba what is interesting is that the church trio and I made some sort of alliance to help both sides to survive this shitstorm that is about to be unleashed. Though before any of you say anything. I'm helping them as a dragon, not a devil, so it's technically all right to cooperate as dragon or neutral in the conflict of great war. And to add something in exchange for them having my assistance I made a deal that they allow you to destroy one of the Excalibur Corps Kiba. Though you need to help also in that if you want a chance to avenge your friends. Issei said making the devils and human girls gasp at what he told. They were shocked to hear that he was willing to intervene in the affairs of the church so that he could help someone. Why? Kiba just asked getting Issei to title his head a little bit at his question. Why what Kiba? Issei questioned as he didn't get what he was asked. 
Why would you do such a thing? Kiba elaborated his question getting a nod from Issei. Well, that is easy. Even though I do hate Ria's and I'm not on the best terms with others. I still want to help you all. And after hearing your story it's natural that I will help any way I can help so that you can stop this feud that is holding you back bro. Issei explained it to Kiba as he looked at him with wide eyes. He thought that Issei didn't want to do anything, but it looked like it was only directed to Ria's, not to the others. If that is the case. Then you have my full help in any way and form. Kiba said making all of them smile. Good, then we will rendezvous here tomorrow after Ice finish school to plan what do next. Cassie told them with a smile as the church trio stood up. Yeah, we will see you all later. Stay safe and with any luck, we will find them soon. Irina said as she started hopping from one foot to other as she had a huge smile on her face as they left the house followed by Zenobia, who every now and then sent a small look to Kiba. I'm taking my leave also, I will contact you later Issei. Good night guys. Kiba spoke after the church members left as he also took his leave to rest for the next few days of chaos. As soon as Kiba left Kendo Duo along with Chelsea left with Grafia who teleported back to Underworld, leaving Issei and Lucy alone. As soon as Grafia left Lucy took Issei's hand and dragged him to their bedroom. With a mischievous smile that was hidden from Issei. Hun, what do you say about us having some fun tonight? Lucy seductively told him as they entered the room that was in pitch darkness. Though to them it was like the lights were on. What do you have in mind darling? Issei answered also in a seductive tone as he was sure as hell that he won't lose to her like last time. Why, I'm thinking about us joining together. Didn't you love? Lucy said as she pushed Issei on the bed quickly, as she sat on his lap with a smirk and a huge blush, as steam was seen going from her ears, as she felt him becoming hard as a rock. She quickly realized that if they didn't have clothes, he would be in her right now, and she would love to feel her love inside of her very much. He, you really want to do it, don't you? My future Queen Issei asked as Lucy gasped as she heard what he told her, as she understood what peace she would be when he gets his pieces, and that he had so much trust in her, and that his love for her was undying. More than anything, my King Lucy said as she bent down a little capturing his lips with hers, as she run her arm all over his torso. While moving her hips getting a moan from him as her thighs were rubbing against his member. Then who am I to disappoint you, my Queen? Issei said with complete lust, as they both parted for air with one of his hand going from her hair all the way to her ass, as he softly grouped it, while the other hand grabbed her breast, squeezing it softly making her moan, as she started to feel hot under her collar and pants, from the way he was talking and touching her right buttons. Make me yours fully my love I want you, I need you, Lucy said as she was barely holding herself sane, with her face red from the pleasure and embarrassment of what he was doing to her. As Issei started to touch and explore other parts of her body while kissing her hungrily making even hornier as her face resembled the color of his balance breaker. But pleasure my darling. Issei spoke hungrily in her ear, biting it a little sending her near the edge. Chapter 20. Hell Unleashed Part 1. As they continued to make out while exploring each other's body. They fall to notice two magic circles forming in their room. They were too much focused on each other and only realized that someone had come when they heard someone caught abruptly, making the two lovers move their head a little to the side to see a grinning like a madman Surzich's and a fuming Rhea's beside him. Groaning in displeasure they separated from each other as they fixed their clothes, with their moment and mode ruined. What do you two want? Issei asked as he was feeling irritated that his alone time with Lucy was interrupted by Grimmery's siblings. Sorry for this Issei, Lucy if I knew I would have postponed my arrival. Serzich's responded with a sly smirk which was awarded by a chop on the head by his sister who was still fuming over the battle, and Lucy kicking her in the head. Brother this isn't the time. We are here so that Ice and Lucy can answer for what they did. Rhea sternly spoke as she glared at the Lucifugeris who had a huge cat-like smirk on her face, and her pawn who just chuckled. Ouch Rhea's that hurt. Serzich's said as he started to nurse his head. Now, dear brother-in-law, what did my future king and I did to make you come all the way here and without my sister, I might add. Lucy politely said making the sibling's eyes go wide. W what did you just say, you whore? Rhea's asked as she started to release her aura that started to disintegrate everything in Issei's room. Making the owner even more pissed. Rhea's if you valid your life, you will stop with your childish insults and stop destroying my room, Issei shouted making the Grimmery heiress flinch from his shout. Be worthless pawn zip it, I will punish you later. First I need to repay that bitch for that hit from earlier. Rhea said with authority. Though that only awakened the sleeping dragon who was now so angry that his eyes started to flash green, while Lucy's eyes started to glow dark blue at the insults that the Grimmery air was sending, and a threat which in Lucy's opinion, only made her forfeit her life, seeing this made Serzich's flinch a little as he could have sworn that he saw death itself manifest in the two teens' eyes. Quickly caught in his fist he made the two looked at him with the same eyes that sent a shiver down his spine, but he needed to intervene before Rhea's becomes a million pieces puzzle. Ice, Lucy please calm down. Rhea's that is enough from you. 
If you wanna live and not make yourself a million pieces puzzle, you better zip it yourself. I for one, don't wanna face a wrath of the heavenly dragon and ice and lighting princess. As I know firsthand how powerful Lucy is and I can only fathom a say's juggernaut drive. Serzicha said quickly making his sister gasp at what she heard. B but they. Rhea started to say only to be quickly silent by Lucy, who was now so extremely angry at her that it made the whole room started to freeze as the windows started to have ice on them and electricity in the room to flash every so often as her powers were starting to flux the more she was pissed. Be worthless, spoiled, bitch princess that is good for nothing that to blab around and demand anything that her body can't get her. One more word from you that I don't like and you will pray to everyone you know and beg for death. I only need a second to kill you and then I can show you true horror and pain that will make even the most sadistic and brutal people shiver in fear, just insult my love again. I will slaughter you and use all the evil pieces in Underworld to revive you every time I kill you only to do it again. And I'm very very creative when it comes to torture and killing, especially spoiled whiny brats that think that are above everything and everyone. They didn't call me the death incarnation for nothing in the civil war and I'm more than happy to show you just why I got that nickname. I could have killed you a million and one times in that little skirmish we had when Chelsea took Kiba. But out of respect for Serzich's, my sister and my love and future master, I hold massively back. Don't tempt me to show you the power that was last seen in the civil war as I'm sure you heard stories about it. And what happened to the battalion of high class devils and ultimate class that faced my wrath? Lucy said in a deathly calm and controlled voice as her eyes were glowing in regal dark blue as everything in the room started to freeze up and the temperature dropped dramatically, making the males to shiver from the cold and Rhea's to start to shiver from fear at what this monster said. She thought that she could do anything she wanted because her brother was Lucifer. It looks like even he has something that he is afraid of and the silver-haired girl was one of the very few people that the great Serzich's was afraid. L. Lucy please calm down. As I already told you once, I still have nightmares from those eyes and the cold doesn't help also so please calm down. Rhea's will keep quiet if she says anything that disturbs you, you are free to disassemble her. Now please lower you power, Serzich's said as his teeth started to flush from the cold. Hearing what her brother said made Rhea's gasp in horror as she thought that her brother would do anything to protect her, even if she didn't want it. But to hear his word made her to start to cry. Hein Serzich's I will stop. But this is literally her final warning. One more smart remark and you will get her back in envelopes with her pieces in it. Lucy said as she decreased her power making the two men sigh in relief. As Serzich's nodded in fear of Lucy doing what she said. Now to the business why are you here? Issei asked as he used a fire magic that he learned from Drag and Elsha to warm everyone as he was the one that had kept himself somewhat warm by his fire that was barely sustain his temperature from Lucy's eyes. Thank you for that. Yes, well for why I come is for two things. 1. Why did you guys fight Rias and Sona and their peerages and 2. For you ice to meet someone that can give you some tips on how to beat Kakabiel. Serzich's explained getting a nod from a brown-haired boy. Well, the first is easy. We were labeled as traitors by your sister and Sona, so we had to fight to keep us free. Don't worry we didn't hurt anyone too much. Lucy was the one who knocked out Rias when I started to generate my dragon shot attack. As Rias let herself open by ordering everyone in her team to stop me, leaving Lucy alone to come to her quickly and neutralize her with one kick I might add. Issei explained as Lucy started to sport a grin as she giggled as Serzich's face turned pale. Uh. Don't worry brother-in-law, I only kick her in the head and sent her flying into the woods. Though that was fun I should really start training again if I wish to serve my love faithfully and to the best of my abilities. Since I will become his queen it's only natural to improve myself. Lucy sweetly told him as some color returned to him as he sighs in relief. Thank you for not beheading her. Serzich's said as he turns to Rias who had her head down. And you really need to learn some battle tactics. That stupid decision could cost you the battle in the game and life in a real fight. I heard a report that Grafia made and from it, you are lucky that Seraphil is reasonable. While it is true that she would come here to deal with Ice and Lucy, she also understands the importance of experience. So, Seraphil is Leviathan and Sona's sister, right? Issei asked getting a nod from Amau. That is correct. And while she is overprotective of Sona. Seraphil also knows when she needs to close her eyes as she was the one that fought in the war. And know how experience is the best way to improve yourself. Serzich said getting a nod from both teens. Okay, that what about that someone that will help with Kakabiel? Issei asked getting a nod from Serzich's. Ah, yes, fair warning Ice. You may not like it, but he is the only one aside from angels that know Kakabiel the best, so be sure to listen to what he says. Lucy, you can come with him as well. It's only fair for the queen to accompany his king. Serzich's explained getting a nod from both. Understood. When do we leave? Lucy asked getting a smirk from the Mao. Now actually. Please step through the circular. Serzich's said as he made a magic circular. 
I will inform you if I learn anything of importance. Issei said as he and Lucy left. Leaving the siblings alone. You just don't learn do you Rias? You really want to die that badly? Lucy and Issei are leagues ahead of you in power. Start improving yourself and start training. From what our mother told me, you are extremely lucky. Issei and Lucy both were willing to fight her. Though they combined are about 40% of her full power she was sure that it would be drawn out fight and with Issei using his gear, he could have given enough time, overpower her, and I'm sure that Lucy will do all she could to delay the battle with her and protect Issei for him to finish her off. So, start using your head for once and start training if you ever want to beat Lucy and Issei and become the rating game champion. Serzich has strictly told her as they both vanished with Rias in tears and angry about what she learned and heard. She was sure that she would make that bitch pay dearly and essay to see how wrong he was about her. That she vowed to herself on the Gremory name. As they appeared, both Lucy and Issei expected to come to some huge mansion or castle, but to their confusion, they found themselves in front of a three stories high house that had a balcony on the second and third floors, with a nice garden in front of the main door. Uh is this the real place where we are supposed to meet this guy? Issei asked Lucy who just shrugged not knowing also. Well, what do you say about knocking on the front door love? She asked making him nod as both walked in front of the door and with three light knocks from Issei, not a minute later the door started to open. Well look who came. If it isn't a red dragon emperor and the heiress of Lucifuge house. Please come in, come in. Serzich has already informed me of your arrival and your names, so you don't need to be hostile. The man who opened the door said. As both teens put up their guard it only made the man laugh seeing them ready for a fight. I thought I told you, I know about you from Serzich's. Now come and I have something to tell you about Kakabiel if you plan to beat him that is. Stepping in front of Issei, Lucy harshly spoke. Who are you and why would we listen to you? Haha, <laughs> oh I'm going to give an earful to Serzich's about this, all your question will be answered when we take a sit and have something to drink. Don't worry I'm on your side. The man said as he started walking back into the house with both teens reluctantly following him. As they all made their way toward a living room, the man told them to sit down as he went into the kitchen to bring some drinks and some snacks for the young couple. I don't trust him, I can feel fallen energy from him. Lucy whispered to Issei who nodded in response. Same, keep your guard up at all times. He whispered back getting a nod and a quick kiss on the cheek, which made him turn a little red. Not a moment later the man returned with a few drinks and some snacks, before he took a step back and released his wings introducing himself while shocking the teens. Now introductions are in order. My name is Azazel, the leader of Grigori, and I'm here to help you too in the fight that is sure to come any day now. Azazel said as his twelve black as night wings popped out. The Azazel as in that Azazel from the Bible. Issei asked as he knew that even in full power both him and Lucy will be dead ten times be now. Yes, that Azazel, though like I said, I'm here to help so don't worry. He said calmly as the couple was still a little bit scared. Why would you want to help us? Especially when it comes to one of your own. Lucy asked as it was strange for the members of the Grigori to stop each other. Well young one it's very simple I don't want to wage war, I was my whole life on the front line, and when a truce was agreed, I decided to make sure that the fallen stay as peaceful as possible, and not to stir the pot too much, as we are already in small numbers. He explained getting a nod from the heiress. Okay, that you suggest we do to stop that idiot who wants to start a new great war. Issei asked quickly getting a chuckle from the leader of Grigori. Oh, it's simple you need to beat him to submission or freeze him in the coldest ice you can, though you still need to beat him so that he doesn't have enough power to free himself from it. Though since you are Red Dragon Emperor, I think ice isn't your best element. Though Lucy was it, she is after Seraphal and Grafia the strongest ice user in the supernatural world. She could with a little boost from you freeze him. Azazel explained making their eyes wide. Oh, boy. Was all that Issei said as he put his hand on his head. He knew it would be hard, but to think that he would most like have to go all out and over it to get his power to the level where Lucy could put him into free state was challenging enough already. Any other information? Lucy said seeing her lover had a hard time thinking of what to do. Yes, there is. I will also send someone to help you in your battle, though when he will arrive is entirely on him. Azazel said as he took a shot of whiskey that he poured. Great. Can this get any worse? Issei rhetorically asked not expecting any answer though Azazel had other ideas. There is actually. Whatever happened, you must keep Rias, Sona and Lucy safe as say hi do. If one of the three dies all hell and heaven will break loose. Since those three are what Kakabiel is aiming for. The church members were sent from Michael, so he knows the chances are slim, and he sent them as a more of support for the heavy hitters in the devil's ranks. Like you. If used correctly, you can achieve something even greater than the most supernatural has seen. Azazel said getting a nod from Lucy, but Issei was not so much interested.
Issei replied getting a nod from Azazel. Well I know what those two did and how Lucy and you handled the situation, Serapho will not be happy and will probably kill you in an instant along with me, so for our combine's sake, please protect both also. Azazel said pleadingly to Issei. I will think about it. Though I'm not making any promises. Issei said as they all changed the topic to another one. As they started to get to know each other better with Lucy giggling and adding a few things in between. Though not a few hours later Lucy woke up as she heard something knocking on the window of their bedroom. Lifting herself up she rubbed her eyes a little what was making so much noise. Getting to the window she saw that Cassie, Murayama, Cadiz and Chelsea were the ones that awakened her from slumber. Using magic, she quickly dressed and teleported in front of the group taking Cadiz's hand before she could throw another pebble at the window. You do know what time it is right? Lucy asked angrily as she was clearly wanting to return to her lover's side to sleep peacefully. We know but there is a huge problem. Kakabiel is attacking the academy now Chelsea said, making Lucy go wide eyes at that. What did you just say? Lucy asked still thinking that she heard it wrong from her sleepy state. It's like Chelsea said. Kakabiel is attacking the Kuo Academy if we don't hurry we could have a war on our hands. Cassie said as she was the one that found out about the attack first. I'll get ice up, you Murayama, Cadiz stay well back from fighting. Help Sona if you can, Cassie and Chelsea go and support anyone fighting there. And where are Arena and Zenobia? Lucy quickly ordered them, her experience in combat and war strategy going into full swing, as she was also once a commander of the most feared unit in the OSF. Arena is badly hurt and was evacuated to hell so that she could be treated for her injuries, Zenobia is with kibichazing Kakabiel when he ambushed and defeated Arena. Cassie sadly told them making girls minus Lucy gasp. What is the problem Lucy? Issei tiredly asked as he pushed himself up reviling his upper body which even now after felling it for several times and seeing it made her blush madly, though she quickly shook her head to get that thought of his well-built body out of her head. Love, Kakabiel is attacking, and Arena is in the underworld going through recovery as Kakabiel defeated her. Lucy answered Issei making him go wide eyes. What he shouted as he rushed to get his clothes on him, while Lucy just giggled. It's what I said, love, he is attacking our school. I sent Cassie and Chelsea to delay him and help the defending force until we get there. She answered getting a nod from her future king. Okay, I'm ready, so let's, Lucy, we have some fallen ass to kick. Issei said as he took her hand before they both teleported in front of the school. As the duo appeared in front they were meet with the members of the student council, who were busy holding a protective barrier. Seeing them some of them sigh in relief as the two heavy hitters arrived at the front line ready to battle. I do good to see you come to the front. Saji said as his fellow pawn just smiled and nodded to him. Same thought, Sona could you drop the barrier so we can enter? Issei asked which he was rewarded with a nod. Of course, and I'm sorry for accusing you for helping the church members. Please forgive me. Sona apologized shocking her peerage though Issei just put a hand on her shoulder and giving her a smile. Apology accepted Sona, though now we need to hurry. I'm guessing that Rias and her group are fighting inside, correct? Issei said getting a positive from the Citrieris. Issei a familiar voice shouted getting the brown-haired boy's attention. As he turned around to face the person that yelled his name, his eyes got wide as the owner of the voice kissed him on the lips hard. Betting over his shock he saw that it was Murayama that was the one who kissed him. Issei please survive this, you mean so much to me. I would never forgive you or myself if you died today. Murayama whispered as she hugged Issei tightly not wanting to let go of him. I don't plan on dying anytime soon, Mura, you can count on that. He answered with a smile which made her have a huge smile on her red face. You better, or I will tell Lucy to revive you so that I can kill you myself. Though, knowing that I've fallen in love for a headstrong perverted idiot, that gives me little assuring. Murayama giggled as Issei turned to stone at her words. What Issei wanted to say, but Lucy started pulling him away from the girl while giggling to herself, as Issei's face was too cute to resist. I'm on my king, we have work to do, we can later discuss about your harem. Lucy said with a giggle as Issei just shook his head returning his thoughts to the battle at hand. Yeah, you are right as always my beautiful queen. Issei said as kissed her cheek making her blush with a huge smile. As they entered the battlefield, what they saw made them widen their eyes. In front of them were four Cerberus, while the orc was fighting them with all they got. Cerberus, so Kakabiel decided to make fun of us devils, didn't he? Lucy asked no one in particular as she started to power up making her presence on the field known as everyone, even Cerberus stopped to see who was letting this much power. Sure looks like it. 
Why don't you go and have fun love? Oh, and go wild, you can be destructive as you like. Issei said with a smile that made Lucy smile, quickly kiss him on the lips as she released her two pairs of wing and flew in high speed at the nearest Cerberus, smirking all the way as she was about to finally cut loose and could show her true power without restraint to her love and king. Time to show off a little. Lucy thought with a sadistic smirk as she gathers a huge amount of lighting in her hands. Not too long after Rhea's finished her disastrous meeting with Issei and Lucy, with her brother lecturing her about her being not thinking about important things. She returned to Orc to get a shower and relax before thinking about what to do with the couple that were getting on her last nerves. Though before she could do what she planned, she felt something entering the school grounds, and it was something that she knew was a big exiting the club, Rhea's, and her pieces saw that the one they felt was Kakabiel, and from the looks of things he had some company. Ah, can I get a break? Rhea's whined getting a giggle from Raynor and Akeno, as they knew that Issei and Lucy were getting on her last nerves. No Kaneko answered without emotions making Rhea's fall face first, while the others laugh at her bad luck. Thanks for that Kaneko Rhea's growled from the floor making Kaneko just nod. Suddenly Sona and her team appeared as Rhea's was about to go out and meet the troubled warmonger. Making the grimmery heiress look at her as Sona stood in front of her. Rhea's you know that this probably Kakabiel, right? Where is Issei Haidu? We could really use his strength now. Sona asked as her peerage stood behind her. Honestly I don't know, he may be anywhere, he doesn't listen to me or respect my authority. And personally, I wish I never revived him. He and that Lucy are making me sick. Rhea said coldly though everyone knew that she was extremely jealous that she wasn't the one girl he loved. Well it doesn't matter, I received a report from one of my familiars and he says that Arena girl was hurt almost fatally, though it sends it to the underworld hospital to try and help her. Now it only leaves us with two church members, and our peerages thought yours is missing two crucial people, and they are your offensive hitting force. Sona said pushing her glasses up as she was starting to get frustrated at this predicament. My peerage and me will keep Kakabiel busy, maybe Issei and Kiba will show up. Hell, I would be glad and happy even if that horse shows up. Rhea said as she and her team started walking towards where Kakabiel was. And my peerage and I will hold the barrier up to prevent chaos from reaching the town. Sona said getting the thumbs up from Rhea's. I took the liberty and informed Lord Lucifer about the attack. He said that he will send reinforcements in an hour. Akeno added shocking Rias. I took the liberty and informed Lord Lucifer about the attack. He said that he will send reinforcements in an hour. Akeno added shocking Rias. What? Why did you call him? Why didn't you call Leviathan? Rias demanded but only got a stern look from her queen and best friend. Like it or not Rias. Even if Issei, Kiba and Lucy show up on time they still don't have enough firepower to stop him. We need a Mayu class fighter, and your brother is the strongest we know of. Akeno answered making Rias growl a little at that. But that out of the way, the Gremory girls made their way to the front line. Sona and her group made their way towards the school gate, where they planned to put up a barrier. Though they were surprised when they saw four girls running at them. Sona, where are the Gremory group now? Chelsea said as Cassie, Murayama, Cadis and her stopped in front of the Citriaris. On the field track, though where is your friend Zenovia, Cassie? Sona asked quickly as Cassie just sighed. Zenobia is with Kiba. She sent me a message saying that they are delayed a little bit, so they will be a little late for the party. Though good new, Issei and Lucy are on their way to help. Oh, and Murayama and Cadis will help your group. Since they learned magic and they are good at it. Cassie quickly answered getting a shocked look from Sona. W what? They know magic. Sona asked getting an affirmative from the kendo duo. Fine, let's just hope all would be alright in the end. Sona said, as Kendo Duo stayed behind while Cassie and Chelsea moved forward to the track field. Chapter 21. Hell Unleashed Part 2. Back on the track field, Grimory's group was confronted with the fallen angel himself Kakabiel and someone they never expected to see again. In front of them were Freed Selzin and Valper Galilei, with the former having a crazy look in his eyes and the later having a smile that gave girls the creeps. Well, what do we have here? An heiress of the Gremory household and I can sense a Citri also. How pleasant. Tell me girl is Serzich's or Seraphol coming. The strong yet bored voice asked making the girls look up to see a man sitting on the throne with his legs and arms crossed while having a bored expression on his face, which consisted of blood-red eyes and bat-like ears. The man was wearing a tuxedo W. Sorry to disappoint you Kakabiel, but my brother and Leviathan are busy with bigger things. They have not interested in dealing with small fried. Rhea said arrogantly, only making Kakabia look at her board as he lifted his hand and made a small spear of light that he thought at the gym destroying it completely while making a 15 meter crater. Well, at least you can entertain me with a small battle. Valper when are the Excaliburs going to be fused? Kakabia asked getting the old man to bow a little answering him. In 10 minutes my lord. 
Valper answered making the falling grin. Good, though in the meantime, you girls have fun with my little pets. He said as he snapped his fingers making the ground explode in a fire before reviling three fully grown Cerberus, making the girls gasp in shock. H.E. brought Cerberus that guarded the Grigori. Rainer said in shock and fear, making Kakabia laugh. Oh, if it isn't my old servant. I thought I felt some falling in the area. Oh, and daughter of Barakiel, this is going to be fun. Kakabia laughed seeing the two half fallen girls growl at him. Forget him now, let's get those Cerberuses. They are a bigger threat now. Rhea said also growling at Kakabiel making him smirk. Yes the girl shouted as they divided into two groups containing Rhea's and Akeno and Raynor and Kaneko, who went to subdue two Cerberus, making the last one to do as he pleased, as they didn't have the numbers to engage all of them. Though that was a short worry as two more people plunge into the battle. Passy and Chelsea join in and engage the last beast, making the girl sigh in relief, as they didn't have to worry about the last Cerberus that was on their back. Through the battle that was underway, it got interrupted when all of them felt a powerful aura skyrocket as they sensed something going in extreme speed their way. Thinking it was a say the girls cheered, though they were surprised when they saw that it was Lucy gathering huge power in her hands. As Lucy got close to one of the underworld beasts she let loose a hellstorm of magic that disintegrated it to nothingness, shocking the people that were fighting. Ah, that was good. I need to do it more often. Lucy said as she landed on the ground before she smirked seeing a shock Kakabiel. Oh, where are my manners? It's pleasant to meet you leader class of fallen angels. My name is Lucy Lucifuge, future queen to the Red Emperor and one of your executioners. Lucy introduces herself as the fallen angel looked at her in shock. Lucifuge. So, you must be Grafia's sister. Kakabiel asked getting a nod from the girl. Ahaha this is better than I expected I get to kill three heirs and make three very powerful people piss and have my war finally. Kakabiel laughed as he got the answer he was hoping for, as the two girls were a sibling to the current strongest people, one of which is the head Mayu, and the other was his wife, who was the second strongest female devil. Don't count on that Kakabiel. A voice said as the Cerberus that was near Cassie and Chelsea roared in pain before it got disintegrated into nothingness, reviling a brown-haired boy with emerald eyes and a booster gear on his left hand. The sight of the boy alone made all the girls have a huge morale boost, as the strongest one has arrived at the battle and was ready for a fight. So you must be the Red Dragon Emperor, now my blood is boiling in the excitement of a good fight. Kakabiel said as he looked at Issei with battle-hungry eyes. Issei looked at him with utmost hatred as he remembered that this bat face almost killed his childhood friend. Well before we face off, let's see how you all handle my servant's new creation, is it ready Valper? Kakabiel asked as he got bored of waiting to see. Yes, my lord the Excalibur is ready and fused. On your command, it can be used. Valper said as a huge magic circular appeared that stretched way beyond the barrier that the Citri Peerage formed. Excellent. Freed get over here and use that sword and have some fun. I need a good entertainment. Kakabiel said with a feral grin that was followed by Freed's as he showed up and took the blade with loony smirk and craziness in his eyes. Yes boss, I will do wonders with this baby. He shouted with bloodlust as he sprinted toward the enemy with all intent to chop them to pieces, and his first target was none other than Chelsea, as he felt that she was the weakest in the group. Telsey Issei shouted as he and Lucy started to take off towards her in a blinding speed to protect her, but Cassie appeared in front of her protecting her with her dual blades. Oh no, you don't you caused enough damage as it is freed. I will be your opponent. Cassie sternly said as she held her blades tightly against his. You bitch, I will kill you for all that you caused me in the past and now for interrupting my beautiful kill. Freed yelled at her as he disengaged only to attack again. Cassie for her part knew that she could kill Freed, but something was telling her to delay him as much as possible, since that would give time for Zenobia and Kiba to arrive and for the blonde knight to kill this plague, so she just dodged her parry the swing as much as she could before she would need to take him out. Why you bitch fight me seriously why are you holding back you shitty bucking whore? Are you afraid that even those devils and that shitty red dragon will reject you? You really think that you could gain someone's trust and friendship? You are just a stupid half-brain whore who is good for nothing more than to be pounded to oblivion, ha 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 Freed shouted insults after insults to her, hoping to break her mentally and make her made a mistake to kill her. That, as it turned out to be, was a very very wrong thing to say, as Cassie Lockhart and all the girls got extremely angry and flared their power to the max, which was fueled by the rage at his word. Though Cassie backed away from the maniac a few steps with her head down and her hair blocking her eyes from being showed. Freed, I was willing to waiting for Zenobia and Kiba to show up and kill you mercifully, but now. I will gut you Alavi Cassie said in a quiet voice before shouting in rage, as her head shot up with her eyes losing her shine, as it showed that she was now pissed and ready to butcher and shred him to pieces. Why you buy Freed started to say, but he stopped himself as he felt himself a bit lighter. Looking to his left arm he saw that it was no detached from his body as blood was gushing out of it. 
everyone was shocked except for Lucy, Issei and Kakabiel, as they saw who the culprit of was cutting Freed's arm, though Lucy and Issei barely saw it, to Kakabiel, it was clear as he was impressed at Cassie's speed and agility. Ah Freed yelled in pain as his brain registered the pain that was now hitting him. You were saying you worm? I did say that I will destroy and cut you to ribbons, didn't I? Oh, and here is your filthy arm back. Cassie said as she threw his arm back at him, though before he could catch it was split in half by Cassie, who appeared in front of Freed and started massacring his body with quickly slashes and hits. Ooh was all that Freed could yell as Cassie continued her assault on him without stopping making everyone even Kakabiel back away from the pissed off swordswoman, as she was now in a pure rage. After the minute of pure unrelenting brutality, Cassie stopped and started walking back towards the group of allies, as Freed still stood in place. UWH Freed tried to shout as he took a step forward, before the blood started to gush through all the cuts that were made by Cassie, making him roll his eyes backward in his head, before his dead body fell to the ground lifeless. With the death of the stray priest by the hands of Cassie, everyone heard a huge explosion near them, turning to see what happened, they were meet with Zenobia and Kiba running towards them with their sword at the ready. Long story my king, one that I will tell you later, for now we have bigger problem. Kiba politely answered getting a nod from his king, as he stepped forward towards the dead body of Freed and Cassie, who had a tear in her eye at what the loony priest said to her. You alright Cassie? Did you do this to Freed? Zenobia asked her fellow church member as Cassie just nodded her head. Yeah. Cassie answered in the voice void of all life. What happened tell me. Zenobia said as hugged her friend. H he said something that is still haunting me to this day, Zenobia. Cassie said with tears running down her face as she couldn't contain herself anymore. All that any one of the devils could do was to have a sad look on their faces as they saw a powerful warrior woman cry as the mention of her past, that from the look of things hurt her too much. Deciding to help her ladder. Issei who was boosting the whole time got near Kiba and put his hand on his shoulder. You wouldn't probably need this for him, but it's good if Kakabiel tries to attack you. Issei said as he told Drake to transfer some of his boosted power to Kiba. Transfer Drake voice echoed through the air as Kiba's power grows. As he gotten over the euphoria of the power he felt, Kiba turned to Issei and saw him not as he just smiled and started walking towards the creator of human hell that he went through. Now that leaves us with you Valper. Hope you said your prayers. Time for you to answer for what you did to me and my fellow comrades. Hope you burn in the deepest pit of hell. Kiba said as he walked past the church duo. And towards the man, he hated more than anything in the world. Oh, so you are the one that I heard survive. Ah, no matter since you all will be dead shortly. You have 20 minutes before this town is no more. Valper and Kakabia laughed together as the others were shocked to the core by what the priest said. W what do you mean no more? Issei asked as he was dreading the answer. You weaklings have to defeat me for the circular to be stopped. That said only your red dragon emperor and Lucifugeris have a minuscule chance of doing that. But it would be entertaining to see you all try and fail and for my war to start. Valper, give that blonde knight that. Akabiel explained giving them a sadistic laugh as he watched all of them turn white with their eyes wide and mouths drop down. As you wish, my lord. Valper replied with a chuckle as he took a something from his robe and trough it towards Kiba who cashed it effortlessly. Though when he saw and felt what was he holding, he started to sob as his dead comrade's energy converted into the spirit form, making them visible to everyone. Making everyone gasp at that. While making Kakabiel and Valper want to trough up at the scene in front of them. Isaiah, you survived a voice belonging to a small girl shouted in happiness. Yes one of us is now living another voice belonging to a male said in joy. And my friends, H how is this be possible? Kiba asked as everywhere he looked his was meet the faces of the ones that laid their lives for him to escape. We were always there Isaiah, you just needed to look past your hatred to see it. All spirit said in a union making it sound like a song was sing. The sight of hundred children surrounding Kiba was something that made everyone there have tears in their eyes, while almost everyone Kakabiel and Valper looked at the scene in pure boredom and the sickness in their stomachs at the mushy stuff. As the children gather near Kiba they started to sing, prompting him to sing with them while they glow brightly. It's coming partner, the knight just entered the league. Drag exclaimed out loud as he knew what was coming. What are you talking about Drag? Issei asked as he wasn't sure what his dragon was hinting at. My comrades, my brothers and sisters, I know what it must be done now. I will do whatever it takes to protect them. Kakabiel, Valper time to meet your maker. Sword birth, balance breaker sword of betrayed Kiba shouted making the orc church duo, Lucy and Chelsea, widen their eyes, while Issei smirks. W what orc shouted in disbelief as they watched Kiba put his hands forward. 
and Kiba's hands, a golden hilt materialized with a ruby at the end, followed by a long blade that was double-edged with blood red line going down the center of the sword point to the hilt, while one side of the blade was pitch dark with the other white as Siberian snow. It was emitting something that was thought impossible. Holy energy mixed with demonic making it unheard of. This is my resolve Valper, Kakabia let's see if you can handle it, Kiba shouted as he charged Valper, only to be stopped by someone else who they never seen. Now, that looks like a beautiful piece of work Devil Knight. I'm very impressed, love the colors of it also. A figure in black robe said in a female voice that made everyone shocked. Who are you? Kiba asked as he found that he was unable to push the figure aside even with his new sword. Who am I, is not important right now. What is is that I need to kill one stray and one that defines my master's wish. The female figure said as she disengaged her sword from Kiba's, making him look at her with wide eyes. What stray are you talking about? Kiba asked as he took his stance with the figure doing the same. Oh, I can answer that. The stray is that Auburn girl Chelsea Dalton, and the one that disobeyed my master's wish is the one and only Red Dragon Emperor. The girl said as she took of her hood showing her black hair and blood red eyes that were showing of its bloodlust. Making Chelsea gasp in horror as she knew who the girl was and what swordswoman she was. But Lucy and Issei put up their guards up even more, as Lucy's eyes started to glow at the mention of this woman killing her love. Are you in a league with Kakabiel? Kiba asked getting only a laugh from the girl. With him, hell no, though I offered my assistance, so I can come here and deal with those two. She answered making Kakabia laugh. Now this is something that entertains me. Though devils you only 15 minutes left to beat me before the city is blown up. Kakabia laugh as he watched them growl. Though their growl was stopped when they heard Valper's voice. How can this be possible, holy and demonic, if that is the case, then that means that the G Valper couldn't finish his sentence, as a light spear pierced his stomach, making him choke a little before falling to the ground lifeless, making the devil's shock. Ah, Valper you were such a good servant, though that was one thing that you didn't need to find out. Oh well, never mind now, the war is soon upon us. Haha. <laughs> Kakabiel said with a sigh before laughing like a maniac while he got death glares from the devils at his statement. Forget him, let's duel knight, I wanna see what that blade of yours can do. The black-haired girl said as she charged a Kiba who in response charged at the girl also. By the way what is your name? Kiba asked as he dodged a slash from the girl that was grinning like a loony. Mia, yeah, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Akame Honda. And I'm your executioner. The girl answered in a sweet tone as her grin grow as she catches Chelsea started to pale at hearing her name. But Akame. Stepping back a bit Chelsea mumbled the name of the new girl in total fear and shocked as never thought that her ex-master would send one of the powerful members to get her essay. She could only pray that her ex-master doesn't send even heavier hitters next. Ah, Chelsea it's so nice to see you again. Though it won't be for long. Akame spoke without the care in the world as she easily dodged or parry all of Kiba's attacks that were sent her way. Making Kiba growl as he couldn't land a hit on her. You are good, no doubt about it. Though what is that sword? I feel a lot of malice coming from it. Kiba asked as he backed away a little to think of new ways to defeat her. Why this little baby is a Murasa more cursed sword if you like, though fair warning. Try to not get cut. It tends to kill someone in an instant. Akame spoke with a smirk as she lifted her blade a little bit, giving the devils and church members good view of it. Betting a horrified gasp at the information about the blade though only Chelsea was the one that didn't gasp, since she knew very well about this blade and its power. Which was freighting and in Akame's hand extremely deadly. The blade was like a katana sword that has the blood red hilt with some engravings on it, along with a long blade coming from it, with a dark and malice aura around it, making Kiba cringe a little bit from it. Knight of Grimory a voice that belongs to Zenobia called making both the sword combatants to look at her as she released Cassie and started to walk toward Kiba while dropping the Excalibur destruction on the ground. What? Can't you see I'm a bit busy at the moment? Kiba said as he refocuses on Akame who was still looking at the blue-haired exorcist that was making its way towards them. Do we still have that deal to work together? Zenobia asked as she stood side by side with Kiba who was looking at Akame. Yes, we do, even though that the Excalibur and the man who made me suffer is dead. I can't let this woman get past me and kill Issei or Chelsea. Kiba answered getting a nod from Zenobia as she put her hands in a prayer and started the chant. Then let me bring some more firepower to our side. Saint Peter. Saint Basil the Great. Saint Dennis. Holy Mother Mary. Please hear my voice. As the chant went on, a rip in space appeared as the whole track was filled with holy aura, making every devil cringe and flinch from it. In the names of the saints whom reside within this blade, I will release it. Durandal Zenobia shouted as she let the handle of a blade come out chained in what looked like heavy-duty chains. As the Durandal slowly exited its pocket in space, it made everyone look at it in awe. After a moment, it fully exited and floated just a bit above Zenobia's arm, like telling her to hold it. 
As soon as she took a good grip at the handle of the giant blue blade with golden trims, the heavy chains snapped like they were made of twigs, freeing the mighty blade. It even unleashed more holy energy, making the devils even more frightened of the weapon, while Lacaime and Kakabia looked at it with wide eyes. W what is that thing? Chelsea asked as she also felt it might, and it made her shiver from it. The Durandal so that was why she discarded Excalibur. Akeno said aloud, making some of the devils turn to her. What do you mean? Rainer asked as she looked at her fellow fallen devil hybrid for an explanation. She discarded the Excalibur since Durandal is stronger than Excalibur in its current state. If the Excalibur was whole, then she would not be needing to use Durandal, they would be equal, Lucy spoke, making everyone look at her in shock. Ah really? Issei asked as Lucy just nodded at him making him gulp a little bit. Oh, so now we have this beauty. Well, who am I to pass up this challenge? Akeem said as she wanted to see what the legendary Durandal is capable of. Well, this bad boy will show you what he can do. He is so strong that, even I, who am a natural Durandal wielder, has trouble to control it. But for this, he will give me enough power to annihilate you. Zenobia said as she turned to Kiba as they both nodded before charging. The came, much to her joy, also moved towards the duo and started to parry and evade strike after strike from the two sword wielders. As the swordsmen and women fought, the others turned their attention to the fallen who still had that bored expression on his face. Making all the devils pissed at him even more. Turning to the girls that were beside him Issei spoke in a serious tone. Lucy, you come with me. Chelsea, I want you to take everyone that is injured out of the harm's way, and that goes for you too Cassie. Betting a nod from them, Issei and Lucy started to move forward, while Cassie went to help Kiba and Zenobia. Chelsea then transformed her gear into eagle and flew high in the air to observe the fight and help if needed. Rias, don't fight him he's way beyond our league. We need to combine our power. Lucy said as Issei and her got close to her. Oh, so the Red Emperor and Lucifugere wants to fight. I can't wait. Who is first I wonder. Kakabiel said as he jumped from his throne and landed perfectly on the ground with no trouble, even made a small crater where he landed. I will go first. I don't like what you want to do and I would love to keep my loved ones alive. Issei said as he stepped forward again, only to be stopped by Lucy who took his hand. No, don't, love. It's better for you to power up as much as possible before going in. Let Rias and M. Lucy tried to stop him, but to no avail, her eyes widened as Issei hit the back of the head, knocking her out with ease, everyone was then shocked including Kakabiel at what he just did. Telsey, come down and get Lucy out of here. Now Issei ordered as she landed down near him in her eagle form before grabbing Lucy and quickly escaping the scene. Issei, are you crazy what are you thinking we need her to stop Kakabiel? Rias shouted at him, couldn't even believe that he would do something like this in front of a very powerful foe. Zip it Ria's I only did what was necessary to secure her life. Her life is much more important to me than mine. Issei said as he turned to face her. His eyes glowing green, making her shiver before he returned his attention to Kakabiel. Issei only spoke a few words, but those were some that made it clear that the battle for Kuo was now underway. Kakabiel I hope you are ready to face the wrath of the Sekiruite. Chapter 22. Issei vs Kakabiel. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker Drag roared, making everyone take a step back as the ground under them started to shake from the power and fury that was unleashed from Issei. As the light died down, it showed Issei in his full glory with his dragon armor, producing a domination aura around him, making the girls wanting to submit to his will in the instant. However, they managed to control themselves as this was important. That however made Kakabia laugh in pure joy, sensing that the energy of the Sekiruite was acceptable and would have some fun out of him at last. That's it show me what you can do Sekiruite show me the power that I felt eons ago once again, Kakabiel shouted in excitement as he unleashed his ten wings ready to fight. You want to feel the power of the Sekiruite? Then who am I to not oblige you? Issei said as he charged at Kakabiel in full speed while the latter did the same. As the two fighters got closer to each other, both pulled back their fists before throwing them forward. As their fists meet, it created a huge impact blast that sends dust and debris everywhere. And that is good I see that you are powerful indeed, but let's see if you can match me. Kakabiel said as he back away while Issei doing same with Drake boosting him the whole way. Ice dear, if you want to beat Kakabiel you need to stall a little bit more before you unleash your dragon shot, if you manage to survive a few more minutes, then you can use explosion. That should catch him by surprise long enough for you to deal a powerful hit to cripple him a bit. Alsha spoke to Issei in his mind telling him how to go about it. I will try, though that Akame girl is still here. While she is present I can't focus only on Kakabiel. 
since she can most likely to get past them and strike me or Chelsea Assay told her getting her to hum an acknowledgement. Ah, yes that is a bit of the problem, inform the others to be on guard and watch closely on a came, will you concentrate on that crow? Drake suggested, getting Assay's and Elsha to think about this before nodding. Alright, I will do that, though Drake any suggestion on how to beat this damn warmonger? Issei asked as he charged again a Kakabiel who grinned before going again to meet him head first blow for blow. Partner, maybe you can use his overexcitement to your advantage. When you engage him again, send a few shots at his wings and then pummel him. Drake suggested making Issei grin. That is a good plan Drake. I will see what I can do. Issei replied before addressing the others in the field. Eyes watch out for that Akane girl, if she gets past Cassie, Zenobia and Kiba, stop her any way you can Issei shouted, getting Akeno and Kaneko to nod, while Riaz and Rainer frown at him ordering them. But they complied nevertheless as he was doing the brunt of the fighting, and they were only watching. You got it Issei, kick his butt. Akeno answered getting the thumbs up from the armor-clad team, as he continued to fight the cadre class with everything he got. As the battle between the fallen angel and the Sekiruate continued, Kiba, Zenobia and Cassie were fighting Akane. For the first time, the trio were fighting seriously since Cassie's speed, Zenobia's destruction and Kiba's sword birth combined made it a very deadly and fatal combo. Well, I'm quite surprised that you three managed to push me to be serious in this little battle. It was way too long since the last time I fought like this. Akame said as she ducks under the Zenobia's swing and quickly backpedal to avoid a trust from Kiba. You're not bad yourself actually. I wouldn't mind sparing with you some time in the future. Zenobia answered as she charged Akame again with Kiba right behind her. Parring their blows with her sword, Akame started her offense as she started to swing her sword at them. As the battle between the trio went, no one noticed that Cassie was not attacking as well or not being there for that matter. That thought was what Akame missed. As Cassie got behind her, she slashed her back with one of her dual swords, making her scream a bit. But as Cassie was about to deal the finishing blow, Akame quickly spooned around and hit her with the hilt of her sword hard in the stomach. That then made the green at back off a bit, giving Akame enough time to get away from the trio. Painting a bit, Akame started to channel a bit of her energy into her sword, making it glow in dark violet. That forced the trio step back a bit from the malice feeling the sword gave off. Aha I never thought that I would need to use this on you Akame spoke while panting heavily from the slash she got and from exhaustion as the trio opposite to her took their positions. And before Akame could attack, a communication circular appeared near her ear. Yes, who is it? Akame asked harshly, but hearing the reply from other side made her pale rapidly as her legs started to shake. I, I am so sorry my lord I, I didn't expect you to call me. Akame stuttered an apology, while sweat gathered even more quickly on the forehead from the battle and the fear of what her master would do to her. After a few moments of silence, the malice energy from Murasum dispersed as Akame relaxed her stance and retreated her sword in its shelter, confusing the trio. W what do you think you're doing? This fight isn't over Cassie shouted to her, making her look her into the eyes. Well, with her gone we can focus on Kakabiel. Kiba said as the girls nodded and turned to look at the sky where the battle was happening. They say all of them shouted as they realized who was falling. But that, the shout was enough for the armored figure to stop falling in midair and quickly moved to the side and dodged a devastating punch that would most likely finished in an instant. Seeing their strongest member was back in the fight, Kiba and the girls quickly made their way towards Riaz and the other girls who were watching the fight go on with worry in their eyes. Delcy though was still bringing Lucy down with her, now that Akane was gone. I'm gonna say you can do it. I know that you have the strength to finish him. All of them thought as they watched the aerial duel that was going on. Here, I have some good and bad news. Which do you want to hear first? Alsha questioned as Issei continued to block and dodge Kakabiel's punches that were sent his way. Uh give me the good news first. Issei replied as he quickly fired his dragon shot, making Kakabiel put his hands in front of him, that was enough to block the attack and making him vulnerable to any attack. Issei's kick to the side had sent the warmonger flying back a bit. Good news is that a cane girl is gone, so you can go all out, but the bad news is that we don't have much time left, I think we have maybe 4-5 minutes left to finish him. However, in your current state, I doubt that you can do it. You have some major injuries to your body, your stamina will soon fall so low that you wouldn't be able to hold your balance breaker anymore. Elsha explained, making a say sigh in relief at first before he heard the rest that made him pale and shiver. D that is really bad. 
Ahhh where the hell are those damned reinforcements we could really use someone stronger like Graphia or some Seraphim to help in this, even that damned Azazel could be a great help hell. I would be even grateful if the White Dragon Emperor came here and stop him, Issei yelled in his head as he started to get even more frustrated at the development of the fight. Issei knew that if he continued to dodge and block, he could maybe power up enough to match Kakabiel. But the experience was something that Kakabiel had plenty of while Issei hasn't. No matter how hard Issei tried he has failed miserably, and with so little time, he put all he had left in one last ditch attempt to stop Kakabiel. Come on boy, is that the best you got? I was expecting a lot more from the feared Sekar Yuite. Kakabiel mocked Issei as Issei just growled. You want the best here it is drag do it, Issei shouted as he felt all the stored boost energizing him, giving him tremendous strength. Explosion drag roared as a huge aura exploded from Issei's body, making the whole school ground shake from the power he was releasing. Seeing that the Sekar Yuite was powered up to the max, Kakabiel let out a dark chuckle. He this is going to be interesting, so how do you want to finish this red dragon? He asked and got an answer a moment later, as the small orb of red energy formed in front of Issei's arm that was pointing toward Kakabiel. This is how. Let's see who has the most powerful attack. Let's finish this madness once and for all Issei shouted loudly, making everyone gasp. But everyone froze when they felt a huge power was gathering behind them, they looked behind and saw that Lucy was now awake. But, from the looks of her glowing eyes and the way her hair was waving in all directions, it was easy to tell that she was furious at Issei for knocking her out before the fight. Issei Haidu, you better win this brawl or I swear to Satan's God and every other deity that I will make you regret having me with you Lucy roared in fury as Issei started to pale rapidly and nod furiously. Her roar and expression made even Kakabiel a bit terrified, he can only picture of what she would do to Issei, making him pale before he shook his head and started laughing loudly at everyone, making them look at him with a question mark above their heads. Ahahahaha <laughs> now that you mentioned that air of lucifuge, I think the rest will love to hear the truth about God and Satan's. Kakabiel said with a savage grin making Issei and Lucy start to sweat at what he was about to tell. And what is that Kakabiel? Rias demanded as she wanted to know what he was saying. Rhea shut up Lucy quickly said to her, wanting to prevent her from finding out something that was a forbidden knowledge. No, I'm tired of being in the dark so spill it Kakabiel what is that you know Rhea's demanded strongly, which only made Kakabiel laugh even more. Ahaha, so your brother didn't tell you? Oh, I'm going to enjoy the look on all of your faces especially on the two church members. Kakabiel said making both Cassie and Zenobia step forward with their swords pointing at him. And how do you know that it would be enjoyable for you? Zenobia asked as Cassie nodded ready to sprint at the fallen to attack him. Oh, my dears, it's simple, why do you think that the Great War stopped? He asked, but before they could answer, he answered for them which greatly shocking them. It's because both the god and the satans are dead. They all died on the last day of the battle, just after they sealed those two dragons. And because of their deaths, I couldn't continue to crush my enemies, as Azazel, that coward withdraws us fallen, just as we were about to win Kakabiel shouted, making everyone but Lucy and Issei wide in their eyes, with Cassie and Zenobia falling to their knees at the revelation. Why why you are lying it can be possible. Are our prayers all for nothing? Zenobia asked while crying with Cassie hugging her tightly with tears also in her eyes. Oh, that Michael is doing everything he can to keep the system running. But with the death of its creator, it's not so much efficient. Why do you think what happened to that blondie, or how he managed to create a demonic holy sword is possible? The answer is simple because the god is dead and the system is barely running. The haha Kakabia laugh loudly, making the girls from Grimory group look even more shocked with Kiba having his fists clenched with rage. But his laughter soon stopped as the barrier that was meant to prevent from fighting leaving the school shattered into million pieces. Looking quickly around everyone, soon saw a white blur coming in their direction before it landed near Issei. That white blur made Issei tense a bit seeing who it was, it was none other than his archenemy, the white dragon emperor and his balance breaker. That was a very wrong thing to say Kakabiel. Azazel won't be happy to hear what you said. The white cladded figure said to Kakabiel, making him growl before he looked at his arch rival. So you are my arch rival? I got to say, I'm impressed at what you managed to do. Only being a devil for a few months and you managed to unlock your breaker and fight that warmonger to a standstill. I can wait for us to battle, it should really be something else, I can already feel it. But sadly, for now, I think it would be best to stop this dog ape before he starts the war that would wipe all of us out. The white emperor said to his red counterpart, getting a nod from red. Before that, I'm not in a condition to fight much more, and this will be better for you to stop him. Issei said as he put a hand on his rival before Drake's voice was heard, shocking everyone to the core with what Issei was doing. Making even his rival shock in the process. Issei, you sure this is wise? He could kill you in an instant after he finishes with Kakabiel, you know that right? Alsha Panicky asked him, but Issei nod mentally. I know that, but I'm in no condition to continue. 
I was more like a delaying force for the cavalry to come. And it's here now. Partner, this is madness, you are giving more power to your enemy, and to make it worse, it is the white dragon. Drake roared in outrage at what his host was doing. I know that, damn it Drake but I'm too injured and exhausted to continue, and he is fresh, and from the looks of things, it's Azazel's trump card. So zip it, you lizard is say harshly answered his dragon. Pine partner, don't say I didn't warn you. Drake said as he did what his host wanted. Transfer Drake voice was heard, all of the new boosts that is say quickly gathered were sent to the white dragon making his stiff from the power boost he was given. You know that was unnecessary, right? He asked, but Issei only shock his head. I gotta make some use of it somehow. Was Issei's response as fallen to his knees, exhausted from the fight. His rival was looking at him for a moment before he flew in high speed at Kakabiel, who was still shocked at what he saw. Never in his life has he seen the two emperors working together. His thoughts were shattered as he felt a strong fist in his stomach, making him cough a bit of blood before looking at his attacker. But the attacker disappeared for a brief moment before sending a quick kick to the head, sending the fallen into the school, and destroying a part of the wall. As soon as Kakabiel was sent flying away from the duo dragons, Lucy rushed to Issei's side to check on him. While she was still pissed at him for doing what he did, that didn't stop her from seeing the man who she loved with all her heart was okay. Love are you alright? She quickly asked getting a soft nod from the boy. Yeah, I'm alright. Issei said between the coughs of blood, as his body was overly exhausted and bruised by fighting Kakabiel. Ice Lucy shouted as soon as she saw the blood he spat out and that it was still coming out from his lips, making her a bit scared for his health. Taking her hand softly, Issei tried to calm her down, which by the looks of things did work. Don't worry my queen, I'm alright. I only strained my body a little bit more than I should, but it looks like it all went well in the end. He softly said as she helped him get up just in time for the white dragon to use his divide dividing to finish of the straight fallen. Divine, divine, divine a voice of the white dragon emperor roared, making everyone gasp as Kakabiel started to cough blood even more from the divine and the hits he took, making him even weaker. Surrender now and I will take you back peacefully. But, I do hope you won't since I got permission from Azazel to use my full power on you. And since the red one has damaged you, plus the power he gave me, I don't think that would be necessary for you. The armored man spoke, making Kakabiel snarled at him before making a huge spear of light and throwing it at the white emperor. Only then he put his arm up and let his gear do the work. Divine, divine, divine was again heard as the spear that was large, then down to a small stick. The emperor for insult purpose let the spear to hit him, only to be shattered as soon as it hit his armor. That forced Kakabiel to widen his eyes. Damn you dragons we should have destroyed your souls when we have beaten you, Kakabiel snarled at the two heavenly dragons. Should have, didn't have. Now I'm getting really bored and I want to chat with my rival. Time to say good night, you stupid warmonger. The hacker Yuku said as he divided even more of Kakabiel's power, making him weak as a human, before sending a powerful kick to his face, sending him flying again into the school, effectively knocking him out. With Kakabiel's downfall, the huge magic circular that was made by Excalibur shattered into nothingness. Thus, making all the devils and church members sigh in relief as the danger was finally averted. As the devils celebrated their victory, only Issei was still on guard as the sight of his rival was not something that he expected, but it was better than nothing. Looking in the direction where his rival left only to saw him dragging a beaten Kakabiel on the ground. As he got closer to the bodies of Freed and Valper, he only sighed as he saw that one had a huge hole in his body while the other was in pieces. Deciding to transport only Kakabiel, Hacker Yuaku opened the transportation circular and transported him to Grigori. As he finished his work, Hacker Yuaku turned to Sekar Yuate and spoke. Follow me, I have something to talk to you. Don't worry, I'm an honorable warrior, I would not attack you in your current state, it wouldn't be fun anyway to beat you when you are not at full strength. And why would I follow you? Give me one good reason for it. Issei asked his fellow emperor. You will find out soon. Now follow me. The white emperor said as he released his wings that shined as he took off towards the skies. Deciding to follow him, Issei let go of Lucy much to her protest, but before she could stop him he flew in high speed towards his rival, leaving a worried Lucy and confused group of devils, as to why Issei would follow his enemy. After a few minutes of flight, they landed on a nearby clearing in the forest just outside of Kuo Town, where devils have no authority. Deciding to quickly find out why the hacker Yuku wanted to have him here, he released his balance breaker. And in turn, the white dragon did the same and revealing himself to Issei. Issei could honestly say that in front of him stood a very handsome guy. The hacker Yuku was from the looks of things, a boy about Issei's age with short silver hair with golden eyes, sharp face, and was wearing a black jacket with white shirt and black jeans. As soon as they disarmed their balance breakers, both sacred gears spring into life with both dragons speaking to each other, while their hosts remain silent until they finish her. We meet again white one. Drake's voice was heard as he greeted his archenemy. 
that we do red one. And I must say your host did a good job in that battle. I can't wait to see him beg for mercy. The voice of the second heavenly dragon was heard, making Drake growl. But I would love to see you eat your words Albion, I think there is a reason your host chose to talk to mine in privacy. So until then Albion. Yes, you are right. Until our fated battle drag. Albion said as both gears disappeared, leaving the two hosts alone. As soon as the dragons finished their small conversation and greeting, the hacker Yuku started the real conversation. I say hi to the Seker Yuite, what I have to tell you is very important, so listen up very closely, the host of Albion said, making Issei look him in the eyes waiting for him to continue. Though what he heard made him shocked and made his blood boil with anger and fury. As soon as the emperors left the battlefield, Sona and her team arrived to see what caused the barrier to shatter like nothing. Arriving at the scene of the battle the Sona and her group gasps at the damage the battle caused. Everything was destroyed or damaged so heavily that a light touch could make it fall. They could hear explosions on the other side of the barrier, and they clearly thought that Riaz and her group along with Issei and his group were heavily injured or may even have casualties. But to their shock and relief, everyone looked unharmed and in a good condition, only Lucy and Church Duo looked like they went through hell, as one was extremely worried, while having a tear going down her cheek, while other had the later look like all hope was ripped out of her, and dread and fear was all that consumed them, as their eyes were dull and hollow. Rushing toward the celebrating group, Sona and her team made themselves know by Sona, asking the oblivious questions. What happened here? Where are Issei and Kakabiel? She asked getting a response from Ria's like they were talking about the weather and not the threat that almost took their lives away. Ice fought Kakabiel to a standstill, and then the White Dragon Emperor showed up and defeated Kakabiel with ease. I really am proud of my cute adorable pawn. Ria said with a small blush on her face, as she clearly remembered the aura of domination that Issei released when he entered his balance breaker. Though Sona had totally different reaction to that reaction to Ria's. W what white dragon emperor so he was the one that broke our barrier. Where is he and Issei now Ria's, Lucy. Sona demanded as she was sure that two dragon emperors together is a recipe for destruction on a huge scale. Issei and the hacker Yuaku went to have a talk Lucy started to answer before she and everyone else felt two powerful energies explode with enough power to wipe everything in a 100 kilometers radius. The whole city was shaking to the core, it had a feeling of an earth shake, but to the devils and church members that was not it, and as soon they put the pieces what was it they started to pale and fear for their lives, as the energies only keep rising and rising. W what was that power it's overwhelming. Rhea asked as she started to sweat and shiver in fear of the powerful engines that released this much power. The power is coming from oh Satan please let him be safe. Lucy said as she pinpointed from where the power was coming, and that filled her with dread and fear, as she quickly unleashed her wings and rocketed towards the power source. Lucy, where are you going what is happening, Murayama shouted to her. But to hers and others' irritation Lucy was already out of hearing range, as she was flying as fast as she could to get to something or someone. Quickly follow her, it looks like she knows where to go, Ria's ordered as everyone unleashed their wings with Akeno grabbing Murayama, Momo Cassie, Ria Caddis and Chelsea Zenobia, before flying quickly towards following Lucy. Chapter 23. The White One. It didn't take Lucy too long to come near the power that was unleashed, but to her fear and dread, the ones that were releasing huge amounts of power were none other than the Seker Yuite and Hacker Yuaku, and from the looks of things they didn't plan on stopping anytime soon, as they powered were going to the point of where even if the whole student council and orc with Lucy and her group attacked to stop them, it would only end in their deaths, and to make it even more, worse they couldn't get close enough to them, since the raw energy was too much for them and would kill them in an instant. So Lucy tried something else that may help to stabilize the situation. Issei stop it you wanna kill all of you as Lucy shouted to him at the top of her lunges, but to her fear, he didn't even register what she told him. When shout didn't work Lucy powered up to the max in an attempt to break their stare down and focus on her, but from the looks of thing, even Lucy at full power wasn't enough to break them and force them to change their focus. Amity can't hear me and I powered up to the max and still nothing. I don't want to send an attack in their direction that would cause huge destruction. What to do? what to do. Lucy thought angrily as she didn't know what to do or how to stop this. Everything that she could think of was only going to get a destruction in its wake. And to add to her frustrations, the others arrived also, and they had exactly the same reaction as Lucy. They were afraid at what would happen as the two heavenly dragons started down one another with their power bursting forward. They could only guess where Issei got this much power as they clearly saw that Issei was heavily injured and he was on his last reserves during the fight. So that only meant that Hacker Yuaku has given him a phoenix tier, Risei had extremely good regeneration since he was part dragon. Lucy, did you try to get their attention? Sona asked the silver-haired beauty. Yes I did, I tried to shout to them that didn't work, then I powered up to maximum, and that didn't even phase them. Anyone has any idea how to break the stalemate. If we don't do it soon, there is a chance there won't be any of us left much more. 
Lucy answered getting a gasp from the girls as they all looked again towards the duo. Though that is when Lucy saw that the two powerhouses were talking and from her perspective, it looked like the white one was the cause for Issei's surge of power, and that was something that unnerved Lucy, as she could only hope that he will calm down before something bad happens. But the girls were too much engrossed in what Lucy said. Lucy Lucifuge one of the strongest devils that would even put fear to even ultimate class, was powerless in the presence of those two powerhouses. If someone like Lucy was powerless, then that would mean that if the fight starts they could only run away and duck for cover until it's over, and one of the two mighty dragons are victorious. And that meant that one of them will die. Let's call Grafia maybe she can help in breaking those two, she is powerful enough right? Cadis asked getting a wide eyes from the three heiresses with Lucy face palming herself for not thinking about her sister sooner. Cadis you are brilliant. Sister should get their attention. Lucy said getting the pink haired girl to blush from the phrase. Thank you sister. Cadis answered with a soft smile. Quickly forming a communication circular Lucy called Grafia. It didn't take very long for the silver-haired queen of annihilation to answer the call. Lucy, how can I help you? We received the information that you guys fraud of Kakabiel and managed to stop him, very nicely done. Grafia praised as she felt very proud of her and her brother-in-law. Sister, why I thank you for the praise we are currently in even more danger. We need your Surziches here now Ice and Hacker Yuku are staring down each other and are releasing a ton of power, I can break through to them since we are far away so that their aura doesn't kill us and even in full power, I can get them to change their focus. Please, sister, can you come and help us? I would rather not see Issei in pieces. He is still injured and tired from fighting Kakabiel all alone by himself. Lucy stated in a hurry getting a gasp from Grafia. I'm on my way, send me coordinates. Surziches, Issei is in trouble move your ass now, we are heading to Kuo now Grafia told Lucy before from the looks of things forgot to turn off the communication circular, making Lucy and some other girls giggle as they heard Surziches whimper from Grafia's orders. It didn't take more than a few moments before a magic circular wit Grimory crest appeared near the girls and from it Grafia and Surziches emerged in their regular clothes. Quickly scanning the area around them Grafia and Surziches were relieved to see that everything was for the most part fine, girls were alright and didn't look like they went through the fight. But when their eyes landed towards the dragons, Grafia's eyes narrowed as she started to make her way towards them. Both Surziches and Grafia felt something that they didn't felt in a long time and that is what made them even more on guard as they clearly could tell that if nothing was done quickly, there would be hell to pay and if white and red dragon emperors combine their power will result would be simply put catastrophic for everyone that faced it. Rias, Sona, Lucy thanks Satan you are alright. Surziches said before he noticed other girls that he wasn't familiar with. Oh and you girls are? I see that Michael did send some church members. Though weren't there three of you? Surziches asked getting the church members to bring their weapons at the ready. Brother those are Cassie Lockethart and Zenovia Corda, their friend was badly injured in a fight with Kakabiel, so she was sent to Underworld in Citri Hospital for recovery. Ria said making Surziches nod. Good, you two can stand down. I'm not here to fight you, I'm here to help Ice. My name is Surziches Lucifer, the Mayu of Underworld. A pleasure to meet you all. He said with a soft smile making the church members to relax somewhat. My name is Mureyama and this here are Cadis and Chelsea, we are what you can say companions of Lucy and Issei. Mureyama said with a bow followed by Cadis and Chelsea, making Surziches look towards Lucy for a moment, giving her a sly smirk before addressing the three girls in front of him. Ah yes, I heard about you three from Grafia, it is pleasure to meet you as well. But I think we can all talk later, looks like Grafia is about to enter their aura range. Surziches said as all of them turned to look what would happen hoping for Grafia's success. As Grafia was near the area where their auras will hurt others or kill them depending on their power, she covered herself with hers and entered it. As soon as she entered it, both Issei and the white dragon turned towards her. It looks like they are now focused on me. That is good, better me than them, it would be catastrophic if they fought here. Grafia thought as she slowly started to release more power to break theirs. Grafia, get out of here, this isn't something that concerns you. Issei coldly told her making her stop for a moment by his cold voice, before she just surged off and continued to make her way towards them. You are partly right dear eyes, but I can let you two fight, and if it means I need to use force then I would. Now lower your powers or I will make you. Grafia stated softly before she ordered them. The strongest queen. Looks like this day is full of surprises. What do you say Red Emperor, what would you do know that you have knowledge of what would most likely happen? The hacker Yuku said making Issei glare at him. You know what I will do, I told you already. And mark my words if what you said happens there would be a lot of debt and rivers of blood that would make Amazon and Nile look like small streams in comparison. Issei almost demonically responded making his rival nod while Grafia had wide eyes. What was said to make Issei this angry? Grafia asked herself as she couldn't understand what could cause the friendly boy like Issei to become almost like demon. 
lowering his power a bit the white dragon unleashed his dragon wings. Then until next time my rival. Next time we meet there would be a glorious battle between us. I do hope you are ready to face the power of the supremacy. The hacker Yuaku said as he started to lift off the ground. And I hope you are ready to face the power of domination white one. Issei replayed as the white dragon emperor just took of making Issei lower his power before he fell on his knees. Ice Grafia rushed to him as he slowly and wobbly started to get up only to fall again, but this time Grafia managed to catch him before he could hit the ground. I'm alright Grafia, don't worry, I'm just too tired and exhausted. Issei barely said as he felt himself falling to sleep in her arms. Shaking her head Grafia just sighed in relief before she flew toward Serzich's and others who were waiting for her return. It only took a few seconds for Grafia with Issei who was sleeping in her arms to get to others. As soon as she landed Lucy quickly took Issei from her and started to hug him tightly not wanting to release him making adults laugh a bit. It looks like our work is done her Grafia, should we get home? Serzich's asked but in response only got a shake of her head. No, master there is something that I think it would be good to know before we leave. It has to do with Issei and his response to the Hakri Ukyo. Grafia answered making Serzich's eyes to narrow a little. And what was his response Grafia? Serzich's asked as he looked at the boy who saved his sister's life along with Lucy's and Sona's with their peerages and friends. His response and I quote is. You know what I will do, I told you already. And mark my words if what you said happens there would be a lot of debt and rivers of blood that would make Amazon and Nile look like small streams in comparison. I think something will happen soon that will most likely make him go to that form and you know as well as me what that means. Those who would make him that much furious don't live long to tell the tale if they are face to face with it. Grafia answered making everyone widen their eyes. Grafia, what form are you talking about, we know about balance breaker, but what is another form? Cadis asked dreading the answer. It's the juggernaut drive. The one that unleashes all the power of the heavenly dragon and its fury. A very few who faced that form survived to tell the tale of it. It is said that once the host of the booster gear are divide dividing entrees that form they lose their sanity and their minds. They have the power to destroy the world many times over, but for that power, there is a grave price to be paid. Their life energy. The more they use it the more it is spent. Of course, if the user has huge magic reserves it can be used to fuel the drive, but if another source isn't found life energy is spent. And most who entered that are dead. When their life force hits zero. Grafia explained getting a horrified filled gasp from the girls who loved to say. Is there any way to prevent that form from coming out? Ria's asked as didn't want to lose her love interest. There is a way but the chances of it happening are slim. A voice said making Lucy and the girls look at Issei's left hand as a jewel appeared on the back of his hand. Tell us Elsha please. Lucy begged to make Elsha giggle a bit before she sadly sighs. I wish there is a chance for you all to help him, but sadly there isn't. The only one that could do this is currently sleeping, and it all depends on his willpower and mental strength. Elsha answered making Lucy start to stiff a bit as she understood what is needed to be done. Can you tell us what was said between the two dragons, and who are you? Serzich's asked getting Elsha to giggle. I'm Elsha Markovic the second strongest host of Drag, the daughter of Russian Bayard and captain of Valkyrie of Lord Aden, the champion of both Lord Perrin and Aden, and the supreme general of the imperial armies of Russian Empire. It's pleasure to meet you Serzich's Gremory, or should I say Lucifer and Grafia Lucifuge Gremory. And to answer your first question, I would love to tell you, but, sadly just before he and the Hakri Ukyo started to talk, he cut off the link to me and Drag, and we couldn't hear what was said. But we felt extreme bloodlust and fury that were started to slowly awake other hosts of Drag that were subject to that horrid drive, if we are lucky that with an awakening of the host, then maybe he will awake also, and that will help a lot. Elsha answered making Serzich's and Grafi an odd while others were in confusion. Elsha who is the one you are talking about? Mureyama asked hoping that it wasn't another girl that was about to awake that had the beauty that would make her selfish desire for a say go down the drain. Ufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufufuf
But like Alsha said that was what caused his downfall, but his achievements were still so large that no other host of drag ever managed to even come close with Alsha being the closest to it. Alsha is there a way for Belzer to train and help Issei? Serzich is asked getting a hum in response. That would be hard to tell, since in order for Belzer to train someone they need to prove themselves to him by fighting him and managing to land a blow at least on him. It took me about 15 years to manage to land a blow to him, but knowing Issei, I don't have any doubt that he will manage to get him to train. She answered getting a nod from the red-haired Mao. That is good to hear, thank you very much Elsha. Now all of you go home, Grafia would you mind if you escort them home? I will fix the school. Serzicha said getting a nod from everyone. When Lucy entered Issei home with Grafia, she immediately went to hers and Issei's room where she laid him down before making her sister some tea. Lucy was grateful that Grafia arranged for Issei's parents to go on the holiday so that they were now on cruiser, most likely near the cost of Greece in the warm and sunny Mediterranean Sea. As Lucy brought the tea, she and her sister sat down in the living room where Lucy gave a report of what happened before Issei knocked her out and later when she regained her consciousness and just before her sister and brother-in-law come her. Grafia for her most part was upset that Issei knocked Lucy out, but she understood why he did it and she was surprised that he managed to hold out that long. She was sure as hell to reward Issei for his courage and strength. It isn't easy to fight even for a moment someone that is way above you even for a minute, but Issei managed to hold his own for more the almost ten and hold out for Azazel's reinforcement to arrive and even help his arch rival to beat Kakabiel. And sister that is all that I can tell you since half I can't tell. Lucy said to Grafia who gave a soft nod. That is plenty Lucy, though I think that Issei is in need to be rewarded for his did. Don't you think Queen of Sekirute? Grafia asked in a sly smirk getting Lucy to blush at her words. Why yes I think it would be only fair. But for now, let's let him rest first. He deserved it sister. Lucy answered getting a nod from her sister. Of course, and do tell him that when he is rested to call me so I can tell him something. Grafia said before both women changed the subject and enjoyed each other's company and pleasant chit-chat and drinking tea, with Grafia teasing a little bit Lucy here and there. It was three days later that Issei was rested and back on his feet when he woke up from his battle Lucy and Chelsea pinned him down, telling him not to move a muscle and that they will do everything he needed. To say that Issei was glad and embarrassed would be an understatement. When he wanted to take a bath Lucy would enter it with him and she would use her breast to wash him completely and giving him boob job just to torture him in Issei's mind as he was sure that he would release his load just from her touch let alone this. He thought that this was her version of revenge for knocking her out. During his home arrest, Chelsea confessed her feeling to Issei much to his shock and giggle of Lucy as she already knew of the feeling that Chelsea had for her love. And she was glad that Issei accepted and reciprocated her feeling much to both girls' joy. Only after fourth day was Issei allowed to go outside, but Lucy was always with him not leaving his side at all. It was when he entered Orc before school that he was surprised to see everyone there. As soon as they noticed him all of them rushed at him knocking him on the floor with a large UFFF. It took about 15 minutes for the girls to release him enough for him to get up. As soon as his feet were on the ground both Caddis and got close to him again and without warning grabbed his head tightly with her hands and lifting herself on her fingers kissed him on the lips again shocking him and the rest of the orc in South Carolina at what the girl that hated Issei's guts did it. When questioned why she did it, her answer was simply that she saw a side of him that was hidden and that she fell for that side of him instead of the side that was shown in school. And of course, that made Rhea's pissed as she wanted to hurt the girls that stole her love interest that didn't fade at all. But that was stopped when Lucy stepped forward and clearly told both South Carolina and Orc that if one of them hurt the girls that she thought of sisters, there would be a lot of mess to clean up. That is when Issei spotted two figures that he was sure that would be by now back in Europe. Zenobia, Cassie, what are you two doing here, aren't you supposed to be in Europe? Issei asked getting a shake from the two. Nope, we were excommunicated when we gave a report to our superiors. So without anywhere to go, Zenobia decide to join Ria's while I'm still human and both of us will be joining your school. Cassie said getting Issei to start to get angry. By those no good Issei started before Lucy kissed him on the lips to calm him down. Which did the trick as he calmed down somewhat. Making some girls jealous by what Lucy did to calm Issei down. After the near tragic event passed. Lucy called her sister to inform her that Issei was in the orc and that they were ready for her to come. It didn't take long for Grafia to appear in front of everyone in her default clothes made outfit. Dot. Ah, I said it's good to see you on your feet and not in our arms. Grafia said making Issei blush and the girls to laugh before she continued. After receiving the report from Lucy, Rias and Sona, it was decided without a fault for you to get a promotion to middle class, and it was decided between both Lord Lucifer and me that we will help you in increasing your knowledge of devil sociality, and of course Lucy will be with you to help you study along. This test is twofold, so that means there is a test of knowledge and fight. I don't have doubt about your fight so you can rest assured that it won't be too hard. 
you will face other low-class devils. Grafia explained getting Rias and Sona along with their peerage to have their eyes wide, along with Mireyama and Cadiz with Chelsea, Zenobia and Cassie to smile happy that the one that was the strongest of them got a promotion. But Lucy hugged Issei tightly while smiling from ear to ear from happiness. W what? Ice is getting a promotion. Why was I not informed and why does Lucy has to be with him? I should be there to help Ice as his king. Rias protested, but it fell on deaf ears as they just outright ignored her and continued to talk about the promotion. Which made her extremely angry, but she was quickly put in place as Chelsea again for tenth time, knocked Rias out, making even her peerage laugh at her misfortune, as Chelsea started mumbling about Rias yapping non-stop about the promotion, causing everyone to laugh even more. Ignoring what Chelsea did, Grafia turned to Issei and gave him a piece of paper. Opening it Issei trying to read it but failed, making Grafia and Lucy to giggle as he trying and failed miserably. Giving up on trying to read it, Issei handed the paper to Lucy, who after clearing her throat read the content. Council of high-class devils, heads of remaining pillars and elders issue following orders. The devil of the house of Gremory. Issei Haidu the pawn of high-class devil Rias Gremory has hereby gotten a promotion for his courage and ferocity in a battle against the following opponents. Riser Phoenix and Kakabiel Cadre class fallen angel. His cunning battle and his use of his sacred gear and its power against Riser Phoenix and his will to protect and delay Kakabiel until reinforcements came saving lives of three high-class pureblood devils while being a low class is enough for the council I've already mentioned to give Issei Haidu the promotion middle class. The content of the test is knowledge of devil's history and martial combat. The test for promotion is on 24.05. This year. Signatures, Serzich's Lucifer Ajuka Beelzebub Seraphal Leviathan Falbium Asmodius. Wow that is awesome but wait that means I have only a few days before the test AHHHHHSA said in awe before he paled and started to freak out with how much time he had before the test. Don't worry love all of us will help you to learn as much as possible and everything that is important to know, including our language. Lucy softly said to him making him blink a few times before he nodded. Okay then. What are we waiting for? Issei said in excitement as he was sure that with Lucy and Grafia, this will be a breeze to pass. Nothing really, sister I will teach Issei history, well you can teach him languages that all right with you? Lucy asked Grafia getting a nod from her older sister. Of course I will teach him high class manners while I'm at it, so when he promote again he will be ready. Grafia added getting a hum in acknowledgement from the young silver haired girl. But that done, Issei and his group left with Cassie tagging along with them to Issei's home, where Lucy will start to teach him all that is important in history of devils, and also the other girls, since she knew that they will be willing to join Issei's peerage when he gets his pieces. When they entered Issei's home and made themselves comfy Issei who was wondering why Cassie was with them decided to question it. Cassie, not that I mind you being here, but why are you here with us and not with Zenobia? Issei asked getting Cassie and Lucy to giggle making his eyebrow to twitch in annoyance. Love, that is simple. Well you are out Cassie came here and talked to me and other girls. And well to make it a long story short, she decided to when you hit the high class she will willingly and gladly join you. Of course, if you accept her. And that goes for Mara, Cadiz and Chelsea. Lucy answered making Issei's eyes go wide with surprise. Why? Was only that Issei asked completely overrun by his emotions. It's like I said, people follow those that lead by example. You went head first against someone that survived great war and fought him to a standstill, you protected everyone there even Murayama and Cadiz, you were the first one to discard what devils thought about church members and offered full support and are a great deal of encouragement to those on the field and off it. And you even sacrifice your hand so that you can protect those you love. Need I say more love? Lucy answered him softly getting a nod from the girls present. Sighing, Issei just smiled towards Cassie making her happy. Well Cassie since you stuck here you are more than welcome to stay here in the guest room or of course you can sleep at Murra's or Caddis's place if they are up. He told her getting Cassie to smile as she hugged him tightly. Thank you Issei, I will gladly accept your offer. And I will make sure to repay it to you. Cassie said making him shake his head. It's alright. As long we all get along then there is no need for anything. Issei replied making everyone smile before they started their learning sessions with Lucy. Time skip a few days later, it was the big day for Issei Haidu the Red Dragon Emperor. After a few grueling days of Lucy's tutoring them all and Grafia's manner and language training Issei felt ready as he would ever be. But the final look behind him, Issei smiled seeing the girls giving him encouragement and best wishes, with a nod to them Lucy, and he entered a magic circular and teleported towards the promotion exams and towards a new challenges and opportunities. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.